Tommy, what are you doing? You know, looking for a place to worship. What? I'm trying to figure out where I can get my Axie powers. Tommy, that book's about The Witcher 3. Well now. So, what are you doing? Ma kicked me out of the house because she says I was playing the game for too long. Mm -hmm. Idea! Idea! What if we played The Witcher 3 but in real life? That's a great idea. Let's go do that right Thank now. you! Okay! Christian, Johnny, Cynthia! What? 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 Do you guys want to play The Witcher in real life? Okay! Okay. What? Good, let's do it. Come on, let's go. a lot like Yennefer. Who's Yennefer? <gasps> what the hell? <sighs> Man, that wasn't even close to as fun as The Witcher is. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll play the Witcher 3? Yeah. 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 This is the busiest part of the year for me. With only two weeks of school left, I have multiple essays, projects, and assignments still due before starting exam week. And this is my graduating year, which means life is only going to get busier from here on out. But as of now, when I'm not at school, working on homework or sleeping, actually screw homework, there's only one thing I'm doing, and that's playing The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, which is an experience truly unlike anything I've ever played. I threw my social life out the window just so I could dedicate a little more time to this masterpiece of a video game, and as you can imagine, I'm not even close to beating the story yet. But I have put over 40 hours into the final installment of the series, which is just enough time to let you know how CD Projekt Red's most ambitious game has turned out. So the second this review is done, I'm turning my PS4 back on to be sucked back in what I like to call the most compelling and believable open world in a video game to date. This is The Witcher 3. The Witcher 3 stars longtime protagonist Geralt of Rivia, who is a witcher, a human being genetically altered since birth to become a professional monster killer for hire. He's not a hero, nor a villain, nor even an anti-hero. He's a man that gets the job done, which means playing and makes Geralt feel as much as a scripted character as well as your own. The story here is simple. Explore the Northern Kingdoms to find Ciri, a girl you train and treat as your daughter. You also need to find her before the Wild Hunt gets her, which if they do, they'll use her powers for unknown evil. At certain scripted points throughout the story, you can even play a Ciri. Now in the grand scheme of things, that's the entire story, which is not as complicated as past entries of the series. But the rest of the story is made up of interacting with intriguing characters both new and old to gather information to find Ciri, as well as two other very important women in Geralt's life, ex-wife Yennefer and ex-lover Triss. To any of you that are wondering if you need to play the previous games to understand what's going on, you don't! The game does a great job of bringing you up to speed, but longtime fans like myself are going to appreciate every little detail there is to see. What really surprises me is how the game never feels like a bunch of side quests just strung together, which is weird because essentially that's the story of The Witcher 3. But when the game really delves into the main plot, it gets borderline tense, exciting, and emotional. This is a very mature game that deals with excessive violence, race, corruption, sex, and rape. This is an adult game, or or at least a game for those mature enough to handle the subject matter. This game is one of the most visually pleasing and naturally beautiful games to date. Landscapes and environments are sprawling and beautiful, from dense forests to small villages, big cities, open fields, and vast stretches of water. And then there's the sun. Oh, the sun makes even disgusting corpses visually pleasing with impressive lighting effects. The only places that don't look that great are some caves, but who's that case were interesting? 
Now one of the biggest criticisms people have heard in other reviews are about the constant frame rate drops and lack of fluidity in camera for consoles. I will say at launch this was true and it did prove to be distracting. But once patch 1.04 came out for the PlayStation 4, the frame rate almost never drops and moving the camera is now more fluent. Basically, most of the technical issues are now gone. Although I have no footage to prove this, everything you see in this video takes place in the first 10 hours for the purpose of avoiding spoilers. You're welcome, guys. So just know that compared to the footage you see here, the game runs even better now. My thanks goes out to CD Projekt Red. The Witcher 3 also has the best weather system in video games hands down. Weather constantly changes and it feels like no two rains are the same. Weather helps make every minute you spend in the game feel different and it deserves a very special mention. Weather only assists in making The Witcher 3 contain the most believable world one can experience. Every inch of the door of the Kingdoms has been thought out carefully. Everything in this world has a reason for its existence and can also provoke certain feelings when exploring. Walking through a cave with dead bodies feels like a location that hasn't been explored for years. Villages and cities feel lived in. Forests are active with wildlife, and walking through a battlefield feels like a war just ended. I could write a whole essay on how well thought out this world is, but I'd rather stop talking about it because A, so you can experience it for yourself, and B, these videos are long enough already, and I don't want to spend a couple hours talking about just one part of the game. But just remember, no game has ever made me feel like it explored its world quite like this game had. You also have a say as to how you want to interact with this world. The Witcher 3 simply has the best choice system in any video game to date. Every choice is meaningful, and even smaller decisions don't feel as if they carry repercussions, but surprisingly enough, they do. Some decisions you make even completely change the rest of the game. There are some events, quests, locations, and characters you can only see by making certain actions. Some choices don't even show you the results and consequences for even 5 to 10 hours of playing time. Simply put, it's impressive. Character and facial animations are all top of the line. Characters' faces evoke real emotion even during a standard dialogue scene. Unlike other RPGs, when talking to other characters, none of you just stand there and look at each other or even repeat the same animations every 3 seconds. Yep, we're looking at you, Bioware. One final note about the game's beautiful presentation is sound design. Voice acting is top notch, monsters are scary sounding, just the world sounds realistic and mysterious. If you just stand around and take a listen, you can hear nearby animals, the wind rustling through trees, and other pretty stuff. This game also has one fantastic soundtrack. I don't even have to say anything, just take a listen. At its core, The Witcher 3 is a third-person open-world RPG, and please don't listen to people that compare it to Skyrim. I don't know why, but that upsets me. But anyways, the main point of the game is to find Ciri, and in order to get information from people, you're going to be doing a lot of exploring and completing favors. Whether it's the main quest or side quest, completing objectives and filling contracts rewards you with information, equipment, or money. What's very impressive is how side quests feel just as important as the main quests do. They don't feel tacked on, repetitive, or nonsensical. The story and characters are all interesting and the gameplay is varied as well. These can range from simple witcher contracts, to rescuing someone's wife, to recovery in an old woman's frying pan. Throughout the game you'll be traversing through the open world which is absolutely massive, either by foot or by horse, although you can't use fast travel points at certain times. Riding your horse roaches it means a fast travel, but it's not necessarily polished. Your horse can make random sharp turns, turn into some random directions, and finds it impossible to jump over rocks that come up to my knees. But whether it's by horse or by foot, traversing the world of the Witcher is an exciting experience. There's a real sense of discovery and wonder in finding unmarked places that have nothing to do with the story. You can find secret powers, hidden treasures, and even creatures that can only be discovered through player exploration. One thing you will be doing a lot of is fighting, and the game does an excellent job of making each battle feel unique. Geralt carries two swords, a steel one to handle humans and animals, and a silver one to take care of monsters. Enemy intelligence in this game is remarkable. Human opponents will try to surround and overwhelm you, so you really have to think carefully about parrying and determine the right moment to attack. Monsters on the other hand are vicious and unrelenting, and they require a lot of dodging. 
Swordplay feels very much like a better version of Assassin's Creed's combat system, but there are some issues with enemy reactions. Sometimes I'll hit an enemy and their health will go down, but there's no audio or visual cue that says I inflicted damage upon them. This happens every now and then, but at least it doesn't ruin the gameplay. Another form of attack is through your signs, which are magic powers. Igni deals fire, Art pushes enemies away, Axie controls mines, Quen gives you a shield, and Yurden places a trap for enemies. All of these signs are useful, and it's fun to read and learn which certain monsters are vulnerable against certain powers. A common trope that's been part of the series since the beginning is to prepare for battle. You have to research and study your enemies, and this means learning what potions and oils to use. The Witcher series always had an alchemy and crafting system that is a necessity to survive throughout the game. With The Witcher 3, it's kind of fun. Exploring the world, picking apart herbs, plants, and bushes, to then exploring crates of loot and pieces of dead monsters can give you what you need to craft items that will help you on your mission. There's a real sense of preparation, even further immersing you into this world. And like I said before, how you tackle missions and deal with people's problems is everything. What you say to someone, the order you do missions, and even how long you could take determine the outcome of the entire game, as well as determine the fate of main characters and whole cities. With 36 different endings, every decision you make makes a difference. Even what you buy, what you buy from changes the game. There's a whole economy that reacts to how you buy and sell. When you start visiting the same merchant over and over again, you'll start to like you and give you discounts. The whole universe in this game is intertwined one way or another, and like I said around 7 times beforehand, it helps immerse you into this world. The main game will take you around 100 hours when you add some side missions in there, and even at 100 hours you won't see everything. With multiple endings, side quests, and difficulties, The Witcher 3 will probably be the longest lasting single player game you can play this year. The Witcher 3 contains the most believable, immersive, and well thought out world I have ever seen in a video game. I know I said this around 10 times beforehand, but I have to drive that point home because it is such an accomplishment. Even after acknowledging that, it is also a perfect final chapter for Geralt's story with fantastic graphics, character, sound design, and sense of exploration. This is a video game experience quite like no other, and considering the quality of the past games of the series, this is an accomplishment all in itself. Buy The Witcher 3, whether you play previous entries or not. It will blow you away with everything it has to offer, and I will continue to play this game for another 100 hours for this one journey, and I will definitely start and complete multiple other playthroughs later in the future. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt receives a 9.75 out of 10. And thank you for watching Bathroom Gamers! Future videos include the review for Splatoon, as well as one or maybe two videos talking about this year's E3. The amount of videos I make all depend on the amount of time that I have. Please leave comments below what you're excited to see at this year's E3. Thank you for watching, and stay fresh!